Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First Peter chapter 1. Peter, Apostle of Jesus Christ, like Paul. We talked about the apostles before. They had seen the resurrected Jesus Christ. They had been in the life ministry of Jesus Christ. And they had to be baptized of John's baptism. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, and let's see, let me follow my notes here. That's North Turkey, the Black Sea, Galatia, that's one of the books that Paul writes to, Cappadocia, and that's, that's Central Turkey, Asia, which is, that's again, the Asian area, I mean, the Turkey's area, and Bithynia. Now, these strangers, are they Gentiles? Are they Jews scattered about? We're going to, by this chapter, we're going to know one thing. They're saved. Because look, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. That's the strangers of chapter, of verse 1. They're elect by God the Father. Now, this is not Calvinism. They have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, and in that, God has chosen them through Jesus Christ. Now, this, we're not going to get into Calvinism and all that, but when you look at the election, you see that it's always based upon the foreknowledge of God. Through sanctification set apart for God, for God's purpose, of the Spirit. Those are the strangers. They're saved. Unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. It was God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit involved in their salvation. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied more and more and more. The first two verses, much information. Blessed be God. Oh, look at that. Grace, peace, blessed. Be of God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, grace, peace, blessed, mercy. Look at what Peter, I mean, Peter's laying it all down. According to great, uh, abundant mercy, has begotten us again unto a lively hope. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Well, that's look at that. These strangers, they are set, they are saved, they are signed, sealed, and delivered by the blood, by the sanctification of the Holy Spirit, by knowing God, God has chosen them through the gospel. To an inheritance incorruptible. As sons of God, we're gonna get an inheritance. It's not going to rot, it's not going to corrode, it's not going to be taken over, it's not going to be taxed. And undefiled, that's pure. That's a pure inheritance. And that fadeth not away, it's eternal inheritance. Now this is, this is more than what any Pope can give. He's not the first Pope. He has nothing to do with the Roman Catholic church I gotta mention that reserved reservations in heaven 
So you can go up to someone and say, to start off a conversation, do you have reservations made in heaven? That's a, there it is, reserved in heaven. That's a great opener. And some of them say, well, how do I get reservations in heaven? Well, you got to make it through God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. And more so, if you can remember that Peter said that in chapter 1, open it up and show him 2, 3, and 4. But that, that is, a, that, I, sometimes I'll use that when I'm preaching. Make your reservations in heaven for you. That's a Bible doctrine. So, by Jesus Christ, tomorrow, I'm going to celebrate 30 years, Lord willing, according to James chapter 5, Lord willing, 30 years ago, <coughs> I made reservations. And those reservations are based upon an inheritance that will never rot, that is pure, and it's forever. There's no checkout when I go into heaven. There is no coming out of New Jerusalem. And look what it says. Reserve in heaven for you. Those strangers. It's me. I'm saved. By God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's for me. You can personally apply that according to 1 Peter 1 4. That reservation. You. Me personally. Who? You. Who? You. Who? Who? You. Who? That's me. Are kept by the power of God through faith. Sound familiar? Under salvation. Is that you? Ready to be revealed in the last time. There's eternal security. I am kept by God through my faith in Jesus Christ. This world's going to have an end, but I won't. This world's going to melt, burn up, but my reservations are forever pure, clean, never to be devoured. Whether, excuse me, within, wherein, Ye greatly rejoice. You greatly rejoice. Look how personal this is. Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Man, you're rejoicing in God right now, but guess what? There may come persecution, there may come trials, there may come troubles and problems. So Peter lays out like Paul does. Not necessarily the same words, but all that live God in Christ Jesus, you're going to suffer. Peter never said the prosperity gospel. Never. From chapter 1 of his letter. You're happy now. Amen. Prosperity. But, comma, heaviness, temptation, troubles. It's coming. That the trial of your faith, ooh, look what James spoke about in chapter 1. The trial of your faith, personally, me, being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Gold goes bye-bye, see you later, out of here. Tax, lost, stolen, misplaced, I die, I can't take it with me in the coffin. But the trial of my faith. If I go back here real quick, the trial of my faith. James 1, 12. Blessed is the man that endureth the temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Scripture with scripture. That's a lot better than gold. A crown that I can wear. By the way, we're going to get pure gold when we get to New Jerusalem, and we're going to walk on it. Precious than gold that perish. Bye bye, gold. Hello, faith. My faith in Jesus Christ and people who will try to get rid of me, people who try to kill me, people who try to do whatever they want to break my faith. If I remain steadfast, I get something better than gold. That's in addition to the inheritance. James said it was a crown. 
Not only do I have reservations in New Jerusalem, but if I keep the faith, if I finish my course like Paul, I'm going to get something better than gold. Lost my place again. Though it be tried with fire. Ouch. And that's kind of interesting there. Because the Roman Catholic Church who claims Peter is their first pope, when you read Fox's Book of the Martyrs, you know how many born-again Bible-believing Christians were burned upon faggots by that church? It is said that Nero, the time of Peter and Paul, the Emperor Nero, he would take Christians, he would put them on a stick or a pole, he would dip them in tar, and then when he had a garden party, he would set them all on fire and say, Look, my friends, look, my brethren, eat, drink, and be merry, for we shall be light by the light of the Christians. So Peter is speaking, hey, this is this is what Nero's doing. Uh, Nero's the one that burns Rome down and says the Christians did it. So when <coughs> oh, excuse me, still going with this sickness. So when Peter says fire, guess what that is? It's fire. So when Jesus mentions fire as eternal damnation, what do you think that means? And when John the Baptist mentions fire, oh, that, that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. You're a fool. When you run fire in the Bible, it's fire. So this is something this is something that's going on in Peter's life right now. People are being burned. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Look at Peter's looking for Jesus. Do you dare ask any Pope, excuse me, Mr. Pope, are you looking for Jesus Christ? Hey, you be kidding. That would be the last thing he's looking for. Peter saying Jesus is coming. Paul said Jesus is coming. James said Jesus is coming. And he hadn't come yet, but he will. He will. He said, listen, you may burn. Praise and honor and glory. Another place in the Bible, Revelation, and I believe this one's mentioned twice. Says they will get a fox in the Fox's Book of Mark. You can read about it in Fox's Book of Mark. There is a crown for the martyrs of Jesus Christ again. So, 1 Peter 1 7 speaks about two crowns. Endure the temptation, and if you do die, you rejoice in it, you sing praises, you go up to that, that thing, you say, I am not going to announce Jesus Christ, he is my Savior, and you burn, you get another crown. Two crowns. One seven. How's that? Whom Jesus, having not seen, I haven't seen him. You seen him? Catholic Church says they, he shows up in a tree, shows up on a piece of toast. Ye love. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I've never seen him. So Peter must be speaking to me too. Hey, I still can die by fire. You don't know. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. This wicked nation. In whom, Jesus, though now we see him not. Right? We don't see him. That's kind of funny because didn't Peter see Jesus? Jesus did three. I mean, Peter and Jesus did three and a half years together. Peter was there in the Mount Transfiguration. Peter was in the upper room when Jesus came out of the tomb. Jesus was fishing when he showed up before he went up to heaven. He saw Jesus go ascend up to heaven. He says, we haven't seen him. Yet believe him, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. How's that him? So, I, I, don't, I forget what the name of that hymn is. So, Congregation of Church, open your song books to 538. Joy, unspeakable, full of glory. And then you've got a bunch of unsaved people in that church who don't love the Lord Jesus Christ, who don't want to have anything to do with Jesus Christ. And they're singing, you're having them sing a lie about looking for Jesus Christ. It shows you the church is not for the unsaved people. We do things in honor of Jesus Christ. 
So when we come across those words with joy unspeakable, full of glory, we're to think about, we should be reminded by the song leader, this is about the Lord's coming. As much as we remind you that the Lord's Supper we're going to do in our church today is for the Lord's coming. So are certain hymns. Receiving the end of your faith. What's the end of your faith? Maybe fire. The end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. You know, at the end of your faith, at the end when you die, that's just the beginning of your salvation. It's just started. Absent from the body, present with the Lord, it just begins. Who are we? Can you imagine 60, 70, maybe 80 years on this planet? You die in the Lord and there is no time. Remarkable. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Now this is an unrecorded event. Jeremiah 1 through 6 through 8. But not all the things the prophets wrote. I mean, excuse me. Say it again. Not all the prophet, not all the things the prophets said were written. Not everything was written down. Some people, oh look, I can't find that in the Old Testament. It may was not. Some people say that um, Enoch preached, and that well, where did he write the Book of Enoch? No, it did not need to be recorded, written down. Holy Spirit, they want you to know. Paul wrote many letters to the Corinthians. We only had two of them. You think Paul only wrote to, what, 14, 14 letters? That's it? You think that's all Paul wrote? <clears throat> Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. The prophet spoke about us. Searching what, or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit was in them did signify to make something known either by signs or by words when it testified beforehand the sufferings the first advent of Christ and the glory the second advent that should follow so the prophet spoke about Isaiah 53 spoke about Jesus Christ suffering servant and all through the apostles, all through the Old Testament, we have yet to learn and have prophesied and have read and studied Jesus is coming. Peter just said Jesus is coming. So if all the prophets spoke about the suffering servant came to pass 100%, you better put sure that God has Jesus coming back a second time. Unto whom? It was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us. Trace all my notes here. Unto us, the apostles, they did minister the things which are now recorded unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. That Old Testament, those prophets spoke. And the apostles now are going out in all the world, Jerusalem, Samaria, and out of the world, and they are preaching to you what those, God, what those prophets said. About what? The gospel. So when you preach the gospel, you preach the Bible. <coughs> <coughs> Nothing added. There's nothing need to be added for the gospel unless you want to try to get the world and lazy people who are wicked to remain in their sins. Wherefore, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, your mind, not your legs, your mind. Be sober. That's not just in, intoxicated. That's also be serious. The interesting remark. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now that hope is like Titus 2.13. It's not, oh, I hope Jesus will come. Oh, I hope. 
No, that is my hope. That's my goal. That's what I want. That's what he's telling them. Listen, you're going through fire trials. Nero. The hope. The main reason. The reason not to sin. Jesus is coming. Holds all true for today. As obedient children, are you obedient of God? I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. One one says the strangers and, and all through the first speaks to their children of God. Not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust, the old man. Get put off the old man. Get rid of him. Bury him. We talked about that. In your ignorance. You had no idea what you were doing serving God. Now that ignorance may put to the fact is he is speaking to Gentiles. Because Jews would have known what God expected of them. They were expected by the law how holy God is. And yet there was in the law that the sin of a Jew could only be forgiven in the law if they did it of ignorance. So it could be both. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy now, present. 14, that was the old man. 15, that's the new man. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. And that means your conduct of life. Your behavior. Your manners. Is to be holy. You're not to be worldly. That's not taken by people today. Because it is written. Be holy. For I am holy. And that is found in Leviticus 11.44. In the law. So see, the law is still good for us. The scripture. I can go read, for God is holy. For I am to be holy. That's perfectly well. Now if you're going to limit my diet as Paul has already talked about. Well, listen, God says you can eat if you can bless it. But there's no limitation on you being holy, and this backs up what's been read through the Gospels, through Paul's writings, through James. We are to be holy. And if ye call on the Father, God, who it, without respect of persons, so God doesn't care. All are one in his eyes. You're all his creation. Who without respect of person judges according to every man's work. Now, we're talking to saved people. You mean that's works for salvation? No. You know what he's talking about right now? What Paul said? He's talking about the judgment seat of Christ. All your works are going to be laid out. We read wood, hay, or stubble, gold, silver, precious stone. Everything you've done, boys, is going to be judged. So you can live after the old man and you're going to burn. Your works will burn. Or you can live in the present as holiness and you'll get a reward. Look how much doctrine Peter knows. my place again. Past the time of your sojourning. See, you don't live here. This is not your home, Peter said. Sojourning is a temporal. Sojourning would be you staying at a motel or a hotel. All right, we're just staying a night here. Just get off the road. We're a little sleepy. We'll be out in the morning. Okay. $45. There are some Christians that came to America and they parked their butts in America. God bless America. Wave the flag. I have a right to hold a, <coughs> hold a gun. I've got liberty. I've got freedom. Heaven, I don't care about that. I'm going someday. We're sojourning here in fear of what? God. Why? Because we're supposed to be holy. We're not supposed to be the old nature. We're not supposed to be sinning. Because Jesus is coming. We better not get caught in our sins when Jesus comes. That's what he's saying. 
For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, you can't buy your way to heaven. Peter, the one at the pearly gates of heaven, says your money cannot do nothing for your soul. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me again. Silver and gold can't buy your soul. Jesus said, What shall a man give an account for his soul? The man said, Oh, I'm going to tear down everything and rebuild my barns. And no, your soul's required tonight. God don't take cash. God don't take checks. He don't take credit. He takes the blood. And he's reminding these people, the strangers are saved. He says, For as much ye know. That ye were not redeemed. You were bought with the blood. You didn't pay for it. You didn't pay for it. From your vain conversation. Your vain life. Received by the tradition. Ooh, from your fathers. That gives a Catholic church a kick in the butt. Traditions of the Catholic church. I'll just give you one. Burn candles for the dead. He just said that tradition. Get rid of it. I make that void by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't pay for candles anymore. I ain't going to do you nothing. That fact, never did you anything before. Jesus went to the temple. They were selling all the merchandise in the temple. Jesus knocked it all down. I'll tell you what I think about your money and buying all this junk. Get out of here. And he sat down with the people and taught them. But, let's read this verse together. With 19, for as much as you know you are not redeemed with the corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition, tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb, who the lamb of God would take away sin in the world, without blemish and without spot. Right, Ruff was that back to John chapter 1 with John the Baptist. The sacrificial lamb, Peter, who knew everything about being Jewish, said, that Passover lamb is my friend Jesus. And you know what? Three and a half years living with Jesus, you know what I got to say about him? He has no blemish and no spot. Ooh. This is the guy that denied Jesus. This is the guy that got angry with Jesus. For, excuse me, who verily, Jesus verily, <coughs> was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Acts 2.23 The finished work of Jesus Christ was even before man and its earth was here. God foreknew, remember we read that in verses 1 through 4? God says, son, yes, father, I'm going to make man. Yes, I know. I know you know. And we're going to make man, we're going to make a man and a woman. Yes, I know. And Lucifer is going to fall. And we're going to name him Satan. I know that, father. And he's going to deceive those men. Yes, father. So before I make man... I need somebody who's going to redeem them men. I need holy blood. I need sinless perfection. I need someone without blemish and without spot. And God looks at his son and you're the one. And so before man is ever made ground up in that powder of dirt in Genesis 2, Jesus said, Father, I will go to Calvary before Calvary is even ever to be Calvary. I will suffer and die on a cross before any tree is planted for man. And you're going to walk up to God and say, your silver or your gold is more important? Excuse me, Jesus. I didn't need to save my soul. I was supposed to save whales. Really? But the precious blood of Christ as a lamb. You got the wrong animals. Save the whales. You know somewhere in the Bible about whales? And Jonah said I was in the belly of what? Hell. So 
a whale is a type of hell. So you're trying to save hell. <laughs> Boy, they really got it wrong, don't they? Whoever was foreordained before the foundation of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, the world wasn't even yet. <laughs> How's that for a contradiction in terms? The election is based upon the foreknowledge of this world, foreknowledge of God. For God so loved the world that before the world, Jesus said, I'll go and die for a father. How remarkable is God? What was manifest in these last times for you? So he's calling this time that he's in the last time. So is it proper for it to say we're in the last days? No, we're in the last times. That's the Bible word. We're in the last times. Peter said it was. 760 A.D. We're in the last times. And believe me, they were persecuting Christians worse than they're persecuting Christians in America. And it may get worse in America. I hope not, but it may. Who, by him, Jesus, do believe in God that raised him up from the dead. So you got to believe in the resurrected Jesus. You've got to believe that Jesus died. You've got to believe he was buried. That's the gospel. Christ died according to Scripture. Was buried and rose again the third day according to Scripture. Well, I was baptized. That's not Scripture. I remember the day I was baptized. You remember the day you received Christ? I joined the church. It's not it. I remember, and you don't need to know, remember the exact date. I thank God I do. April 25th, 1987, in my grandma's living room at her coffee table, 773 Broad Street, Waterford, Connecticut. I knelt down with Joe Caswell and asked Christ to save me. Then the following week, I was baptized. That following next day, Sunday, I went to church, professed to the people. I received Christ as my Savior. I went home that afternoon, told my father he's going to hell. Had been witnessing to him. I didn't, I didn't know anything about joining the church. I didn't know anything about joining the church to ooh, four or five years later at another church. I didn't know anything about church. I just went to church because God said, Go to church. Love me. Read your Bible. That's where I thought I was supposed to be. I didn't know there was membership. And gave him glory. Satan tried to rob Jesus of that glory. If you fall down and worship me, I'll give you this piece of junk world for a little time. A moment of time. And that glory will be extended to him by us that have believed on him. That your faith, my faith, and my hope might be in God. So when I have my faith in Jesus, you know I'm going to hit another religion here. You know I'm going to. If my faith is in Jesus Christ, and it says my faith and hope is in Jesus, then it's in God. So don't tell me Jesus is not God by 1 Peter 1.21. My faith in Jesus Christ is in hope might be in God. That's Jesus. That's God. So if you don't believe Jesus is God and God is Jesus, I don't want to be in your shoes. Seeing. You know what the problem Eve had? She saw something that she wasn't supposed to be. But watch this. Seeing ye. Now we're looking to all the people. It was you, 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 you. Now ye have purified your souls. How do you purify your soul? People give you all kinds of reasons. In obeying the truth. Now what did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
through the Spirit, there's Jesus, there's God, and there's the Holy Spirit. Verses 20, 21 and 22. G, uh, Peter, I almost called him Jesus. Peter has a remarkable writings about the Trinity. Unto unfeigned love of the brethren, unpretend. You know what frame means? I'm going to dress up. I'm going to secretly go see the witch of Endor. Because I don't want her to know it's me. Will you get dressed, dear? Make yourself to be someone. Go see that prophet and find out about our dying child. And God says, Sir, I know you can't see, but that woman's going to come in. She's such and such wife. And she comes walking through the door. She says, Why feign this ourselves to be someone else? You know what feign is? Feign is Hollywood actors and actresses who pretend to be someone else who they're not. Skits. Rehearsals, scripts, and yet unto the unframed love of the brethren. We're not supposed to pretend we love each other. We are to have a true, honest love for the brethren, as Christ the Holy Spirit has had unto us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, we ought to have that love for the brethren also. And if you pick up Fox Book of Martyrs, there are many stories in there about Christians who gave their lives for another Christian. Who stepped in their place. See, again, that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. 1 Timothy 4.12 Oh, remarkable statement, Peter. This is the guy that, you know, everybody, oh, Peter spoke up quick. Peter, blah, 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 blah. Peter was remarkable. Being, what's those words? Born again. John 3, 3. Being born again. That's what I am. None of a corruptible seed. Oh. All right, so there is a corruptible seed. Now, where would Peter learn about a seed and being born again? I forget what was in that, but Mark chapter 4. What's that? That's the parable of the sower. How do you like that one? Watch. But of incorruptible by the word of God, that matches the parable that Jesus told and explained to the, parable, to the, to the disciples. But a man went out and sold the seed, and he told him the seed is the word of God. You can only be born again, verse 23, by the word of God. And it better be that, say it with me now, un, or excuse me, incorruptible seed. I'm telling you something, the modern Bibles are corruptible. They remove the blood. They take Jesus out. They remove the fact is that Joseph was Joseph was just the, the adopted father. I don't know how far it goes, but I'm, I'm going to say modern Bibles and your salvation. And the Bible spoke that he was two or three years old and he was in the house. Yeah. So, you can tell me that, okay, modern Bibles, you're wrong. Verse 23, I'm going to say, I'm going to lean to, no, you're wrong. When you tell what God says and you cut, remove, add to, make things for it, and it's not the Word of God, how, how important is to have a King James Bible? incorruptible word of God rests upon your soul now can you imagine stand the great white throne to follow uh, judgment 
Well, Jesus, I had an NIV, and I was witnessed to by an NIV. And depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But gee, my NIV, God, I don't know what that is. That's not what I wrote. i be careful. I'm a little bit more strict when it comes to salvation than many of the brethren. I'm a lot stricter. But it's an incorruptible word of God. King James Bible was with me 30 years ago. I got to say, I mean, I strayed from that. I went and stole the Bible that had pretty pictures in it. I didn't realize what the King James Bible. I didn't realize what the, what the Good News Bible was. But I got into it. Which liveth, which liveth, and abideth forever. The corruptible seed about the Word of God, the corruptible seed does not live forever. It is what, according to Mark chapter 4, the parable, it's devoured by who? Satan. Satan ain't going to devour this word. How many years has he attacked the King James Bible, the Geneva Bible, which is the, 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 the plant of the King James Bible? How many years has he tried to stop this Bible? And he can. Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. You know where they found uh, sin at sin at that point. Vaticanus, Vaticanus. You know where they found that? It was in a trash can. Sinaiticus puts you back under the law, Mount Sinai. Know your history. Your Bible came from a trash can. That's a remarkable. That's true. I like that. Praise God. Glory to God. He's giving us his word. He knows what his word is. I mean, if you want to talk about artificial word, artificial salvation, that maybe give you, uh, you know, a Jesus that his mother was overpowered or something like that, you know? I came out of that mess. For all flesh is as grass. Oh, Peter, come on. You can be a little nicer, can't you? Well, what would be? Listen, he told you, be holy. He said, your former lust. He said, no, that's all. You know what you are? You're grass. And all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. Oh, look at all the degrees. Look at all the advances. Look at the medication. Look at everything. Look at the weapons. Look how great our country is. The grass withereth, it dies, and the flower thereof falleth away. That's what God thinks of man. Six thousand years of man, God says, into the grave you go. He describes men as wheat and tares. <laughs> he takes the tares and casts them into the fire. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. That's what Jesus said. I came out of the mouth of Jesus through Peter. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Now you take 23 uh, and you, shadow 24 for a minute. Being born again of the uh, not of the corruptible seed but, the in, but of the incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth in Satan don't want me to say this. And that's with my mouth. Being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and bideth forever. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. What about men that rewrite the Bible? For all flesh is grass, and all the glory of men is flower and grass. The grass withers, the flower thereof falls away, but the word of God will remain. That's quite interesting. All those Bible revisers, they're going to die. But the word of God is going to live. In verse 25, he says, Your soul is based upon the gospel of the word of God that's free. Oh, friend, we're having a movie at our church. You come and maybe you can get saved. Uh -uh. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. There it is. 
I may be too strict. There it is. There it is. Can't refute it. 